Hey guys, I have two pages in my mini junk journal, um, two encaustic pages in my mini junk journal to share with you today. I'm starting out on the left side, just collaging some random vintage papers down using collage page mat. And um, these are like uh, vintage ledger papers. Um, most of them are from a vintage ledger that I got from, um, it's a like Polish club from where my grandparents met. And, um, and then this lighter one is like an 1860s ledger. And I'm just gonna collage those down until I'm kind of happy. And then I'm also gonna add a piece of um, pattern, sewing pattern on top of uh, those ledger papers. And then for the right side, this is a library pocket that has a layer of gesso on it. I'm just gonna add a big piece of the um, Polish Club ledger. And I really like to start my pages out with this ledger paper. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, I talked about this, that it just feels like that's where my grandparents met. So that's where my story kind of began. They're like the oldest relatives I, I knew, you know? So I like to start my pages out like that as well. So then once that's dry, I'm going to go back to the left side and add a little bit of turquoise Dina Wakely Media and also a little bit of Titan Buff. No, it's just called Buff. I, I want to call it Titan Buff because that's the golden name, but yeah, okay, so it's Buff. And I'm also going to add a little bit of water and also dab some up with my paper towel because I really want like a light, sheer, transparent layer of paint because I still want to see those vintage papers underneath. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna go in with my palette knife and some Blick gesso. Now this isn't heavy gesso, but it does have quite a bit more body to it than some other regular gessos. So um, I really like it for applying uh, gesso with a palette knife because it, it does have thicker body than the, um, other gessos. And then I am gonna dry that and do a little stamping. This is the Gossamer, the Large Gossamer Butterfly by Viva Las Vegas Stamps. And then I'm also gonna take some um, archival ink in French Aquamarine. It's a little pad from the Letterit collection. And I only wanna stamp his one wing, so I'm gonna make sure I put a piece of paper behind so that I don't stamp on the other pages. And I'm just gonna stamp that down. The, the blue is very, very light, but I'm really going for subtle light layers and then this one here is the small gossamer butterfly and then I'm going to start adding adding my layer of wax so uh, my goal for doing encaustic was to do it inexpensively and the only thing I bought new for encaustic I'm showing my, my little crock pot there <laughs> I bought the RNF encaustic uh, medium so it's beeswax and um, whatever the binder is I can't think of what it's called right now um, and then I just used the mini crock pot I have to heat up the wax. I use a paintbrush I already had, and I use my regular heat gun, my embossing heat gun. <clears throat> so I didn't really have to spend a whole lot of money and it's been working out for me um, really well. So um, you're supposed to fuse or melt the layers. So once I add my layer of wax, I um, hit it with my heat gun to melt it or fuse it together and then I'm going to add a layer of white acrylic paint on top with my palette knife and I know there's rules about what you can put on wax and the layers and this and that but honestly I, this is my journal I'm just playing I'm just figuring it out so I'm really not that concerned with it and it's holding up just fine but I do have to let that air dry because I can't hit it with the heat gun or it'll like completely melt into the wax. So while that's air drying, I'm gonna work on the other side and I'm just gonna add my wax to this side. And it is a library pocket, so um, it's like a little wonky, um, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> I, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna add that layer of um, wax and then I have this um, like quote um, tissue paper piece from the Dina Wakely collage sheets and it has like white writing on it and I thought it would be cool if you could see it in the end you don't really end up seeing it that well um, here once I melt the wax it looks really cool but after I put all my other layers you can't really see it that well so I'm gonna fuse that layer and then I had this little 
like figure guy sketched on tracing paper and I'm gonna melt my bottom layer of wax stick him on that and then I'm gonna stick a layer of wax on top and he, he didn't stick out that stick on that good he was like um, curling up the edges were like curling up he wasn't staying sucked down um, I don't know if it's because it was tracing paper or what because I've done this with tissue paper and it works just fine so I'm just really trying to make it stick down I'm gonna heat the layers of wax um, I'm gonna try to press him down a little better with the end of a paintbrush um, but in the end he does end up like sticking up a little bit it just adds a little interest I think a little dimension to the background and you know it's not a, a, a piece that I'm gonna sell or that's going in the Louvre or anything so it's not that serious to me um, and also um, Oh, okay, so I'm gonna take some raw umber heavy body acrylic paint and a Dina Wakely bird stencil. I think it's called Birds in Flight. And then this tool is called the Tool in One by Spellbinders, and it's to get intricate dies out of or die cuts out of dies. And I'm just gonna use the the pokey tool to kind of like carve into my wax using the stencil my wax isn't wet but it's not like completely hard and dry so i'm still able to kind of carve into it with the pokey tool and i'm just going to add my birds until i'm happy and i can't really see that good where they are <laughs> so we're just kind of hoping for the best so once I think I'm going to be happy, I'm going to add some raw umber, some of that raw umber paint and some water because it is heavy body and I really want that paint to go into those cracks of um, the birds there. So I'm going to really work it in. And then I'm going to wipe that back. I'm gonna spray it with some water to make sure I get the paint off the very, very top layer and just so the paint stays in the cracks of the birds. And then it wasn't quite dark enough, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna do that till I'm happy with the intensity of color. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of Marine by Dina Weekly Media. Um, there's like a little blue stripe from the ledger paper so I thought I could bring a little blue in and just I, I just really like the marine color <laughs> so I'm gonna wipe a little bit of that back so it leaves a real subtle layer and then for a little finishing touch I'm gonna add some of these Umwow studio chipboard confetti stars and I'm just adding a drop of wax on my paper putting the star down and then adding a drop of wax on top. And then I thought I'd go over the birds with a layer of wax of, as well. Um, since I have done this page, I have realized um, that I can take a palette knife and kind of scrape some of that wax away um, from like dimensional elements so it doesn't look so like globby looking, you know? Um, but I didn't figure that out in this one. <laughs> <laughs> so they just end up kind of globby looking and I'm holding my book up with the piece of paper behind it because I have a lot of wax on there and I'm trying to get some of that to drip down now it did end up making it like really globby at the bottom but I really like the way it turned out I thought it, it turned out really cool um yeah so now my left side is dry the white paint over there is dry and I'm gonna add this gossamer butterfly that I stamped in it stays on ink on some uh, cheapy tissue paper and the tissue paper works so much better than the tracing tracing paper it like disappears completely it sticks down really well I'm gonna add a layer of wax all over that and all over the whole paper and then I'm just gonna melt that with my heat gun the embossing gun gets hot enough that it melts the wax just fine that I didn't need one of those like industrial um, heat tool things and then I thought it needed a little something else, so I busted out my gold foiling and I just stuck it down to the wax, like without any adhesive or anything, and it stuck really well, like so well that I wanted like a little splotchy look in the wings and I had to like scrape some of that extra up with my fingernail because it stuck down so well. 
and I didn't put a layer of wax on top of that. I don't know if I should if or if I need to like if it would rub off but you know time will tell I guess it's in my journal and that's it for my two pages um, I did have to take the right page out the pocket page because the wax was so thick I, <laughs> I couldn't get to work on any of the other pages behind it so I just took a like exacto knife and cut it out and um, but the left page is still in there so yeah, that's it for my encaustic um, pages. If you have any questions, let me know. I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'll try to help <laughs> if I can. Um, yeah, so cheapy way of doing encaustics. Working out for me, really enjoying it. Kind of obsessed with it, actually. So yeah, um, I have some original pieces of art in my Etsy shop. And um, yep, that's it. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye, guys.